Hello, uh, Donna here. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this little tutorial. Now today I'd like to show you how to make uh, hollow forms um, with your fingers. Basically, we're making polymer clay balloons. Once you know how to make these polymer clay balloons, then of course you'll know how to make pinch pots very, very easily. So these are some hollow forms that I've made. And let me prove to you that they are hollow by taking and just floating them in water so you can see that they are indeed hollow. Okay. Now the first thing you're going to need, of course, is clay. And I'm just going to be using my scrap clay. Now this is Kato scrap right here. And um, if you've worked with my clay at all, you know that it is stiffer. And for this particular technique, you're gonna want to soften it up quite a bit. And uh, what you'll use is, this is all I have left of my clay conditioning block. So I have to get some more from Vernon, uh, but I've been using it quite a bit. I really like the way it makes the clay feel. This particular technique, you're really gonna need some clay softener if you're using Kato. All right, so this piece was actually this that I added this to. So I've softened it quite a bit and I'll show you how soft. Okay, this is Kato. I folded it and of course it cracked along that edge. And this is the Kato with the clay softener. So you can see it has softened it to the extent and taken care of that cracking issue. Now let me take this and pinch and see how difficult or how easy it is for me to thin this clay with my fingers. And while it can be done, I am exerting quite a bit of pressure to get it done. And because this process relies on this kind of motion repeatedly, um, it really behooves me to make it softer and to make it a little easier and less hard on my hands. So this is the clay that I've added the conditioner to. And let's look. And it is a lot easier I can thin it quite easily with a lot less pressure than I had to exert with a Kato uh, that did not have the softener in it. So take that aside. Now I'm going to take this, roll it through my pasta machine. My atlas starts at zero, so I've rolled it down through setting number one, which means uh, two settings, zero and then one. Now I'm going to roll it up very tightly. The goal here is not to get any air, no air. I don't want any air trapped as I'm pushing the clay and rolling it up into a cylinder. I think I'll just cut this end off. You can see at the end there was some gapping. So I'm going to close both ends to make sure I don't have any air there. Now let's kind of squish it down and make our cylinder a bit shorter because the goal here is for me to turn this into a ball. So I'll take my fingers and I'm just pushing against 
the corners at the top and bottom and trying to round the whole thing. Okay, we're getting there. I'm going to take and squeeze it in my palms. And now I will try to roll it into a ball. Now as I'm rolling, I'm pressing my hands together and I'm looking to make sure there's no air inside. And the way you would know if there was air inside is you would roll it and then you would feel just a slight slip and you would roll and it would slip because what that means is that there's air in there between the layers and so they don't want to stick together so they constantly slip like that. Now, if you feel that as you're rolling, then I would advise you start again take the clay, roll it through the machine, roll it up again, repeat the process, because that bit of air inside could become a problem for you later on in the process. And you might as well take care of it before you spend too much time or effort on making your hollow form. Okay. All right. So now I'm just going to flatten it. Flatten, flatten with my palms first and then I take my acrylic rod and I continue to flatten it. And today I'm going to make it thinner quite a bit thinner than I have been. So let's see what happens. Because the hollow forms I showed you, they actually have walls that are quite thick. So maybe you want to make something that's really light. So you would not want to have walls that are very thick. So I rolled this down and it's maybe a bit thicker than the thickest setting of my pasta machine, which is fine. Now I'm just going to take and stretch the clay slightly as I rotate. So I'm moving the clay around and gently tugging on the center. And that starts bringing out kind of a bowl shape like that. Okay, not perfectly flat anymore, it's a bowl. Now let's move a little bit farther away from the center and stretch a bit again. Okay, so now it's more like a bowl. And from the side you can see what's happening. All right, now at this point I'm going to start bringing the sides up. So I've flattened it, I've spread it out so it's wide like a big bowl. But now I want to start bringing the perimeter in so eventually it will close. So to do that, what I'm going to do is position my fingers and then push them together. So I'm compressing the rim of the bowl. And that jingling is my cat, Dusty. Does. He's my big assistant in the studio. He's always with me. Okay, so you see how what was once a very wide bowl is now has now become something quite a bit more compact. It's more like a soup bowl and less like uh, a platter. So I will keep compressing the rim like so
And what you'll notice is as you're compressing the rim, of course the clay along the rim is getting thicker. You've taken more clay and you've jammed it into a smaller space, so of course it's thicker. So let's thin it out with our fingers, like so. And as you're working, try to build some awareness of how thick the clay is everywhere you are pressing. You want it uniformly thick, but once again, it is not critical because uh, honestly, no one's going to see the thickness. All right, so I'm going to cut here because we're at 11 minutes and it becomes difficult. So I'm gonna cut here and then I will start again after I've done this a few more times by myself and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back again and I've done it a couple more times so you can see that the opening is now smaller. Now I'm gonna take this tool, I don't know where I got this. I might have bought it in the Czech Republic, maybe. I don't honestly remember, but I'm running it inside. And this is actually thinning the walls at the bottom. And I wanted to do it at this point because I can still get this in the hole. You know, if you don't have this particular tool and because it has to be a rather large ball style. So that's a big ball. So you're not gonna use a very tiny ball or anything that's small that might actually rip the clay. Okay, so that feels good. So I'm just rotating and stroking the inside and that's kind of stretching the clay a bit. Okay, now at this point, of course, I can't get my hands inside the way I was. So I will compress from the outside, like so, like this, all right? And at some point, it gets to be so small, you can't even get your fingers in from the outside. So what do you do then? Well, it's simple. You put it down and you close the opening by taking your fingers and pushing them together like this. I'll show you, see? And I'm gonna make it smaller and smaller and smaller just by pushing from the outside. Now, an artist by the name of Pierre Volkos made these absolutely beautiful sort of balloon, translucent balloon shapes. And she used to take, um, she actually took a straw. Let me see if I have something that will work in any fashion that I can blow, blow through. I don't even know if I can get this in there now because I... Oh, here's a smaller one. Okay, but what she did was she would take a straw, put it inside, and then blow on it. And I am getting air inside, and it became a bit rounder. But once again, my clay, this is still Kato Poly clay, right? And it is a lot softer. But if you were to do this technique with a clay like Cernit or Primo, they're much, much softer, much softer. And while you could blow in them and expand, you also have much greater chance of actually blowing a hole through the clay. So that's the danger. <laughs> there's the advantage and there's the hazard. Okay. 
And I will write Pierre's name in the comment section, um, just in case you haven't, uh, you're not familiar with her work. When I first started in polymer clay, Pierre was pretty much what we all aspired to. Her cane work was amazing, but she was so innovative and she is actually the person who pioneered the whole uh, family of mica shift techniques. So she is someone, if you're not aware of, then you should be aware of her because she's really amazing. Um, she left us to go back to dancing and she's a dancer, so now she tangos. All right, so now I have this balloon and it has a little tail on it. But what I'm gonna show you now is just some quick shaping because the air inside um, enable, will enable us to do some shaping to reshape the balloon. And as long as it's airtight, you can do this. So let's draw a little point out of the bottom. And when I say you can do it, I mean you can do it without fear of the whole piece collapsing. The walls won't collapse because of the air inside. So let me draw out a point on the bottom. And let's alter the shape a little bit. Just by pushing and pulling out the bottom. So having this air captured inside the clay is really quite wonderful. It opens up possibilities that you don't really have if you don't have this completely enclosed cavity. All right, so I'm not gonna do any more than that. Um, this particular one, like this, and it's still wet. You know, I just took a tool like this and I just repeatedly went over and over and over like that. And I didn't push terribly hard, I just wanted to make you know, these light, just lightly indicate these sections. This one also started out like this, but I drew the point out more and then I took a tool like this and I rolled and pushed it in on both sides. And you have to do it repeatedly because the air is going to push back on you. I'm gonna leave this one just like this though, nice and round. So it looks like some kind of fruit or vegetable. Okay, now this is ready to be cured, but the one thing I have left to do is take um, a needle and poke a small hole some place where I think it will not be as visible. And by poking that very tiny hole, um, when it cures, well, you know, heat expands. So the air will expand inside as it's curing. And as it's cooling, the air contracts. And sometimes it's really weird, but it over contracts. So when it over contracts, it does things like pull the walls of something in. It would just actually suck the air, the walls together, and it would alter the shape. So by putting that little tiny hole there, I'm creating a vent so that when the air expands, it will escape through the vent. And when the air cools and contracts, that hole will allow air to go back into the cavity. All right, so let's cure this and I'll be back. Hello, back again. Uh, now, while my piece is baking, uh, I decided I'd do a little experimentation. I took some Kato Soft and I tried to work with it and make 
a hollow form and it's so soft it was really hard to do and I wouldn't recommend using a clay that's this soft. Now I don't work with the other clays so I don't know how this compares to you know Cernit or Fimo, Fimo Soft Primo. I, I just don't honestly know. All I can tell you is that a clay that's extremely soft is going to be problematic. So then I made this. This is a ball and it's actually some scrap and I would say a little more of the Kato white. Okay, so this is really soft. It's not as soft as this, but it's really soft. So I thought I would show you how you can actually blow into uh, into a form like this. Now, it's hazardous, as I said, because I don't know if there are any really thin areas or where they might be. But if there are and I blow too hard, guess what? <laughs> it's going to blow right out and it will be useless. Okay. So I just want to show you, so I'm going to bring it all the way up and I'm going to blow in and I'm not blowing so much as I'm puffing, like puff and then rest, puff, rest, puff, rest. Okay, I'm not going to do any more. I'm just going to close it off. I just wanted to show you that indeed it can be done, but it is hazardous. Okay, now I'll be back. Okay, I thought about it, and uh, I'm going to turn this into a pot. So I took the brass tube out. I closed it, closed the end up, and now I'm going to take a very sharp scalpel and... But an opening. Like so. Now the opening itself is a little rough, so I think I'll just take my tube to the inside and see if I can make by rolling on the inside if I can make it look a little better because it's looking really rough. This is a little hard. The clay is very soft. As I said, it's primarily Kato soft with some Kato in it. Maybe, mm, I guess it's close to half and half, but uh, there's quite a bit more Kato soft in this particular mix. Now just refine the opening a bit so it looks a little better. Now I might stop here. I've made the opening wide enough so after it's baked, if I wanted to, I could uh, really refine it and make it much better than it is now. So I'm gonna stop because the clay, as I said, is extremely soft and what may happen is I may actually ruin it, uh, such as it is. You know, this is, well, it is what it is. It's just a pinch pot. Okay, back again in a bit. Okay, back again. Here's the one that uh, I just made. So, boink, there it goes, floating around. No. <laughs> I don't really know what the purpose of these is. They're just kind of fun to make. And um, and so if you guys make them and you figure something out, 
to do with them. It's like really neat. Uh, tell me. Because <laughs> at this point, I just like making them. Okay. Let me take this aside. My little bobbers. Here's the little pinch pot. It's also cured. And it does hold water. So it could be a little posy pot. Um kind of tiny so it'd be a small posy but anyway so thank you for watching a little tutorial and um until we meet again bye